We did not recommend anything on that. We did not feel that was under our uh, jurisdiction. I just want to acknowledge a group that's here with us uh, today, Julie Campbell and, and some of her associates are all dressed appropriately in green. I think uh, they thought they would get to talk to us, but since we don't open it up for public comment, I will just say I think they're here uh, to talk a little, to tell us about House Bill, what, what do we have now? One third. The House of uh, Medical Cannabis. And we know we've heard from this group many times. They've been here to tell the story and they've worked very hard to get this bill passed. So I want to say congratulations on that. I know it still has to go through the Senate, but I believe you feel pretty positive. And the message you'd like to get out is maybe contact who you know in the Senate to work on this. Is that right? Yes. And uh, we, have, we heard again from Dr. Lee today, 64% are overdoses, but I don't believe any of those were from medical cannabis, right, Dr. Lee? Right. Uh, and as we, uh, or I see, I don't know that the rest of the court is in agreement, but we see this as a, an off-road from the opioid crisis. <coughs> We're not leading to it, but it's something to help with that. Mm -hmm. And so congratulations on your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Hope things move forward. I would like to add to Master Boone's comment to that group. And I think he went in the right direction working with your legislators, doing what you need to do at that level, because it, it can't be done at this level. I just want to commend you for working with your legislators to get as far as you can. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else? No, I think that's all for me. All right, Mr. Clyde. Uh Yes, Judge. Uh, as uh, Lisa alluded to last Tuesday, we had a, mm -hmm. a committee meeting, resources committee, support meeting. <coughs> At what I thought was a very, very good meeting. We had almost the whole fiscal court there. I think there was only two uh, that weren't there. We had good uh, representation from our community. And uh, we had a process that uh, should be an example going forward about how to uh, address issues. We sat around a table, we had a civil conversation, and uh, we had, a, I think, an understanding from each uh, party that was represented uh, where we were coming from. There were two resolutions that were submitted and neither were um, moved forward. So today, uh, I presented one of those resolutions. Today I'd like to bring forward uh, a resolution. Uh, and the sole purpose of this uh, resolution is to have a collective response uh, to all resolutions that come before this court. Uh, and basically, the resolution states that uh, be it resolved that all resolutions that come before this body are responded to as follows. Whereas the U.S. Constitution is the supreme law of the land, whereas the U.S. Constitution includes 27 ratified amendments enumerated as follows. And in this uh, resolution, not only are they enumerated, but they're also summarized. And not only the second amendment, but all 27 amendments that are contained within the Constitution. My resolution ends with the comment that whereas the Kentucky Constitution prescribes an oath of office to be administered to Hardin County Fiscal Court members, and whereas Hardin County Fiscal Court members last swore their oath on December 11, 2018 to support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, therefore be it resolved the members of the Hardin County Fiscal Court reaffirm their oath of office to support the United States Constitution and the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. So help us God. And I move the judge that uh, this resolution be approved. Very much by Mr. Clam. Second. Second by Mr. Doug Goodman. Any discussion? Judge, I have a little bit um, to say about that. Um, in its present form, I, I'm going to vote no. Mainly because our process over the years has been everything goes to committee, and it's approved by committee. And then it's presented to um, county attorney if it needs to, or it comes before the fiscal court, either way. None of that was done. I, I happened to be there at the meeting, and I think it was informative. And there was a lot of people that gave good talks on their side, um, on both sides. But if I remember correctly, whatever, I have not seen this resolution, I mean, that Mr. Clinton has, this is the first I've heard of it. Um, 
in its format. So, number one, nothing was presented to court to review. Every, every, all of us that sit on committees, everything we do, um, we take minutes. And if you look at the minutes of today from the resources and support, none of that was done. I, I, what I remember correctly is that uh, Mr. Klum had something that he had been working on. And at the end of the meeting, he passed that document to you for you to review um, and for the county attorney's approval. Um, I haven't heard any of that, seen any of that. So I don't know to know until that process is done with everything else that we do. Judge, could I respond? Go ahead. First of all, I don't know which committee then should it come in front of. I was told it comes before the resources committee support. That's what we did. And so what committee is the proper committee to bring it before? I don't think he's saying that it wasn't the proper committee. I think he says that in our committee, what happened is that it was given to the judge to give to the county attorney and that we haven't heard back. Well, I remember that I had 12 copies with me and I offered them to everyone in the room uh, that wanted to sit. And I think all of the one master, uh, master King took a copy. So it was available when anybody wanted to see it. But that's, I, I don't want to belabor that and argue that that's not the issue. I just trying to bring forward a resolution that could collectively speak uh, to the issues not only the Second Amendment, but every other issue that comes before the court that involves the, amend the amendments uh, and, and our, our obligation. Uh, it's almost like uh, reaffirming your vows, and, uh, your wedding vows. Uh, you know, you, you believe what you uh, believe, you, you love your, your spouse, and, uh, but you just reaffirm it. That's basically all this is. It's just reaffirming our obligation uh, to, uh, to the process. I personally appreciate what's happened because it's caused me to dig deeper into the Constitution, deeper into the amendments, to understand it more. I've kind of forgotten it since the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth birth. And so uh, I, I've uh, kind of had a refresher course on, on this, but uh, uh, but it was available for anyone who wanted to see it. I comment that, uh, like Mr. Easter, and I'll be voting no today uh, based on the we don't need. To reaffirm that, if, if we were going to reaffirm it, like the example you used of the wedding vows, I would suggest that perhaps we all take the oath again. That's what we need to do to reaffirm it. But we've taken the oath; it's a matter of record. Uh, in fact, I distributed copies of those records to you a couple of meetings ago, in case you uh, misplaced perhaps the ones that you did in December 18. Uh, but it's redundant. There's no reason to do it again. I think it's symbolic, but I think it's a step in the right direction. I hope you guys support it. I support the statute. I think they've done a great job. Any other comments today? Yes. Uh, I understand where Mr. Reese was coming from. What I hear you say is that you uh, are waiting on response from the county attorney with whatever information the judge wants to attach to it. Let me, let me clarify that. No. I know that's the process. Mm -hmm. Also know that it goes before the committee. It is given to the chair, and the committee and those there discuss it in its full point. That's what I'm saying. It did not occur. I'm not. I was not waiting for it because it didn't go through the committee. I didn't think it was going through. Normally, what most of us do on committee reports, if it's lengthy or it's a relevant resolution or whatever. It goes in your box out there so you have an opportunity to look at it if you couldn't attend the meeting. The other thing I look at, if it would have passed the committee, then it would have been on the agenda. It's not on the agenda. It's not in the minutes of uh, Mrs. Boone's reporting. So I'm just saying there's a process that needs to be done unless we are right for everything. I believe the committee didn't uh, state that uh, it wasn't proper to come to your committee, but that if any magistrate wanted to propose a resolution <coughs> in court, that they had that opportunity. Is that not correct? <coughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to vote no. The reason I'm going to vote no 
and it's completely around Bush. If, if the, this amendment, this issue, does not affect the operation of Lane County, we have no authority in this arena. We have no authority in the arena of medical marijuana. We can't approve medical marijuana on the counties. So therefore, they did exactly what they should have done. As you mentioned, they went to the state legislature. They got done what they wanted to get done through the state legislature, which is the proper process. This second amendment, man, I support the second amendment. The Second Amendment, we have no authority to deal in that arena as a fiscal court. And Mr. Goodwin pointed out, yep, this is just something that we would do as, what was the word you used, Doug? Said Bob. As a symbol. Do we as a fiscal court need to begin dealing with symbolic gestures. Oh, we got the yes. basketball. Okay. We want to start if we have all that. You know, I agree with everything everybody says. I think we all agree on the subject. And so it's just real how we're going to say it. And that was the purpose of the resolution is to have we make a statement. This is how we deal with resolutions. We don't deal with resolutions. Very good. We don't deal. So this is a statement saying we support the Constitution. That's the way we deal with resolutions. It's still so that any future resolution that comes to force of this nature, we've already had our say publicly about it. We have a document on the file that stipulates that. I mean, we don't disagree on this whole thing, folks. It just we just can't agree on that say. Any other thoughts? I had uh, intended to reserve some of the comments for. When it came my turn, but I, I want to share with you that I have a strong commitment to uh, uh, the Second Amendment, as I do every single amendment in our Constitution. Uh, I swore an oath, uh, and before I served as Magistrate of Cardin County, I never sworn in such an oath to our Constitution. But as a citizen born into citizenship, I believed in and have always held in high esteem our Constitution as being the most effective legal document that could exist in the world. I still feel very much that way. I don't think that there is anything that needs to be done other than to uphold the Constitution. I have sworn that oath that I will protect and defend it. I will, with every breath that I have in myself, I do not believe that any such act as this strengthens our confidence in the Constitution. In some ways, I think it may weaken public confidence in the Constitution. Um, I have many uh, constituents, several, who um, desire this to be what we do, pass a resolution specifically for the Second Amendment. I've been told that I would be a hero for the cause if I would put it forward. Um, I, I need to tell you that I want to be a hero for our Constitution if I'm a hero for anything. And for our process, as long as it is legal and within the Constitution. Our oath that we took was legal and the right process and was within the Constitution. And I don't believe in any way I need to add anything to that other than to perform the oath that I've sworn to. Uh, I intend to do that. Um, if need be, for the benefit of those who may come, uh, with any resolution that might apply to our Constitution at the local level, which we have no authority over, uh, I would be willing again to swear to that oath on a daily basis or at every meeting that we have. But once you've done it, you've done it. And that is my position on it. I know that does not please many of those people that, that I really love, appreciate, and care for. Um, and uh, don't play politics. I simply do what I believe is right. And um, my position on this would be 
Uh, I know what. Anyone else like to comment? I'm just going to answer the judge. You know, with what everybody said. I believe everything that has been said today. It will not be like you do. Oh, no. I hope you don't take this as a plan of politics, DG. But anyway, Judge, I call the question. Yeah, no. One more comment. I want it to be known that a no vote to this does not in any way reflect my lack of support for the Constitution. <laughs> I want you to know that I'm fully supported. I'll take that up. If there's no one else, it's no. Clam? Yes. Wiseman? No. Thompson? No. King? No. Judge Barry? No. Easter? No. Doug Goodman? Yes. Boom. Anything else, Mr. Clark? Uh, please don't drink and drive. Mm -hmm. and, uh, don't text and drive. Mr. Watson? Uh, I agree. Mr. Thompson? I do have some comments that I want to share. Uh, just recently, it was the 20th, uh, last Thursday, uh, was uh, local uh, government legislative day in Frankfurt. And I do my very best to get there and contact uh, our legislators who serve us in Frankfurt and was able to either directly or indirectly contact the six representatives that represent part of the county that includes uh, Russ Weber, Nancy Tate, Dean Stamore, uh, Bart Rowland, um, Samurai Evren, and Jim Duplessis. Uh, and uh, had communications with them that I'll share. Uh, our uh, Senator um, Perry Dennis was ill and was not there that day. Um, but I uh, had communications with them regarding the Second Amendment and their stand on it. Generally, every one of them are completely in support of defending the Second Amendment and have indicated that that's what they would do and that they would support uh, a local um, decision that was made in regards to the uh, issue of Second Amendment sanctuary. Um, I appreciate that because they are the ones who are charged with uh, laws that will affect the application of our Constitution, not us. So I commend them, I appreciate them, and I appreciate their commitment to the Second Amendment rights in the Constitution. I'll also uh, share with you that uh, I was able to observe uh, the House as they struggle with the medical, medical marijuana issue. And there um, were many uh, thoughts that were shared there. Um, several pointed out uh, that there needed to be many, uh, um, I guess, controls um, built into the approval of that that would assure that it's properly um, uh, carried out with uh, the uh, prescription by doctors and uh, um, then the, uh, I guess the uh, prescription actually be filled by pharmacists, approved by the pharmacist. Um, that didn't stop it from being passed, but I think there are still issues out there that you guys would be advised to address as far as how it will operate. Uh, I know that it will have some positive effect on various individuals, and you've gone the right way with it. I commend you, uh, continue to work toward the proper administration of it and the success of it, if it is to uh, be enacted. Uh, and I urge you to do that. I'm very proud of our legislators and proud of the fact that they're very responsive, at least they were for me uh, in, in that particular day, and had good contact with each of them. Thank you. Judge So, anything else? Ms. Donnelly, anything else from here? Yes. All right. Uh, next meeting in March, Fiscal Board is on the 10th of March. Tuesday afternoon, 3 30 in the afternoon, here in Fort Worth. If there's anything else down the floor, so I'm just going to get over to the floor.